Welcome to this edition of On Tier Craftsman. Greetings, I'm Astara Helga Lomer, and today I'm going to show some simple null binding that you can use to make hats, mittens, or socks. The items that you will need will be yarn. You can use wool as I'm using today, or other fibers. The simplest is single ply and a darning type needle. The one that I like the most is a wooden needle that a friend made for me. Those are the only items that you will need. I find it best to start with approximately a one to two yard length, holding the end between your index finger and your thumb of your left hand. You're going to wrap around your index finger twice, pinch it, pull it off of your index finger. The last loop that you created goes up, the first loop goes down to make kind of a pretzel shape. You're going to weave the needle from the back in and out of that, pinch it, pull it to the left so that the thread creates a loop on your thumb. Make sure that this tension is the same each and every time that you create a loop on your thumb. Pick up one loop, turn it, goes under the loop on your thumb. Pull the loop off, pinch it, and pull it so that you create another loop on your thumb. Now you're ready to make your first stitch. You're going to pick up the first two loops on your thumb, twist it, go under the loop on your thumb, pinch it, pull another loop onto your thumb. Now you're going to do the same stitch each and every time, picking up two loops, twisting it, and putting it under your thumb. This is how you start mittens or socks. Pick up two loops, twist under your thumb. This will create a caterpillar on your thumb. You can see that there are several stitches that are already here. When you are ready to make the tip of a mitten, these stitches will be important. To turn to make the tip of a mitten, go through the first stitch, pull it tight, pick up the first two loops, and go under both of those loops. This time you're only going to take one loop off of your thumb because this is the new loop on your thumb. This is called turning. You're going to go through the same stitch, creates the loop on your thumb, pick the two loops up, under the stitch on your thumb, take one off. Now you'll move to the next one because you've gone through that stitch twice. Pick up this stitch, create the loop on your thumb, pick up two loops, under your thumb, take one off. Now you can see that this has turned, starting to come back on itself. This is how you continue to make the tip of a mitten or the toe of a sock. When you get to the other end, you'll need to go through the stitch twice like you did at the beginning. start to curve. This is the toe of the sock where this item was started. As you can see it starts here and spirals around increasing stitches meaning stitching two stitches in one previously made going around. You can see that it comes all the way to this part of the sock. This is left open continues up the sock and then stitches are picked up and in this case they are decreased as you come down making the point and ending in this small circle. A hat is done much the same way starting in the center you can really see the spiral on this how it increases and spirals out increasing stitches each time as you go around to make the hat large enough to fit on the head. All of these items are wool except for the lime green. This one is linen.
So when picking up your knot binding after you've left it laying there for a while, one of the questions is, how do you find your loop? If you pull on your needle, the loop that belongs on your thumb will tighten. You can go back and loosen up that, that loop so that your thumb can fit back in there. Being that we've only worked with a one or two yard piece of yarn, we're going to come to the end. After you've made your last stitch, and your working thread is no longer long enough. That's what happens if you pull it too tight. Take your needle off, take it off your thumb, and open up the fibers of this single ply yarn. Have another two yard piece that you've already pulled off. Open up the fibers of that yarn lay them over each other and this is called a spit splice. You're going to spit in your hand and rub that splice so that it rubs back together and spins it back together. This is going to be a weak point for your sewing. So when you pull that through you're going to want to be careful that you support that. I'm going to thread your needle again. Pick up your stitch, two loops, and as you pull this through, you want to be gentle as you come to the end so that you don't undo your splice. And each and every time that you need to add on yarn, you can do that and you can change colors at that time too. Once that splice has been sewn in, the rest of your thread is as strong as it was without the splice. and you can't even tell where it was done. One of the differences between null binding and knitting is if you pull on it because you've made a mistake, it tightens it down to a knot. It does not undo the loops. It's one of the ways that you can tell null binding from knitting. One of the earliest known extant pieces of null binding is found about 1650 BC in Israel. It was a fragment of a uh, sandal bottom made out of bast fiber. Probably the best known null binding is found during the Viking Age. Sock found in York and the stitch that I am showing today is the mammon stitch found during that same time period. It is found in many different cultures, made out of many different fibers, and still found in some areas used today. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you found some of this information interesting. If you want more information, please look up null binding. It's the Norwegian spelling. Lots of information out there, some videos, books. Have fun with the fibers.